All right, good morning, everybody. March 15th, 2018, Thursday, 6.40 a.m. These are wind chill charts, and the reason I'm showing you this is because we're still dealing with that counterclockwise rotation of winter storm Skylar and our third nor'easter. Uh, we have temperatures even below 10 degrees in some of these areas. Right now, it's reading 12 degrees outside my window, and I'm right in this area where it says 16, so those temperatures are varying. Uh, again, this is wind chill. It is expected to warm up a little in the south. We have a dry air band that is moving from west to east, but right behind it, we have a moisture system down near the Baja of Mexico entering from e uh, west to east, rather, and then we have another winter storm, possibly, that will add to the low that may be part of nor'easter number four. Now, the reason I say might be is because there's still some... Uh, non-communication going on I guess you can say between the different models but the constants are still there and that's why I brought this chart up for you today we're gonna look at some of these wind charts now I've shown you this chart before now you could see our jet stream here our jet stream is in a bit of a wobble you could see the outline of the US here here's the Baja region of Mexico Gulf of Mexico Florida moving up to Carolinas into the Northeast now this is that counterclockwise spin we just spoke about uh, winter storm Skylar slash nor'easter number three, basically a winter hurricane, bomb cyclone, bombogenesis, whatever you want to call it, all the same thing. Uh, but look, we have this constant wave going up and down with our jet stream, and then we have a cross shear wind towards the bottom. Now, I'm going to try to put this all together and explain to you guys why these nor'easters are constantly happening and what else we have to expect, which, is, which could be nor'easter number four. Now, I want you to take a look at this chart here. This is a jet stream chart. Now, I want you to remember, try to match these two. We have a upper-level shear wind moving west to east towards the bottom across Mexico into the Gulf, and then we have our jet stream basically inside that. So picture this as one separate entity here coming all the way down the bottom, and then picture this. This is our jet stream, and the high dips and the low dips, anything that comes low would allow cold air to move down. Anything that bends up this way allows that moist or the, the warm air from the Gulf move up. That's why we have a warm patch in this area that's moving west to east. We're going to have some dry air hitting Florida, very warm temperatures, but that is going to be followed by cold air, and that is because this this basic shape here is not going away and I'm going to show you this on the jet stream chart now watch how this line down here this upper level shear wind basically keeps our jet stream inside it tumbling any system basically in the same direction moving it down and then up into the northeast and this is why we can expect yet another nor'easter uh, between the 20th and the 22nd now if I move across quickly here you can see the bottom stays consistent it's like a west to east movement and then everything in this area whether if it's a moisture system it's tumbling along and then you can see the wavy lines of our jet stream now I'm gonna move back and forth a few times you can get an idea of how this is moving it's almost looking like a big half circle down here right and then everything else in between is getting all smushed together and moved around but it is a constant flow of air that is causing these systems to move across the US and then up into the Northeast now I want you to watch something here here was winter storm Skylar and the third nor'easter now as I move forward what I want you to pay attention to is this low here this starts up by uh, Washington and Oregon okay there it is right there and I want you to follow it as I move across it's getting tumbled within our jet stream and the upper level shear winds and then it says by day 10 8 9 and 10 which is the 20 21st and 22nd you see yet a fourth nor'easter moving right up the northeast there it is right there the low pressure uh, just like we saw with day one this is the low pressure here the nor'easter that just passed through and then we move forward you can see this system here gets brought down and then up and that is because nothing is changing with our jet stream again we'll bring it back to this chart our jet stream is constantly staying in this wobble thing and then we got this west to east shear wind that is keeping it all within this pocket area here and that's why we have all these nor'easter situations going on now I want you to look at tropical tidbits here this is the GFS model I'm gonna back it up to current time you can see the remnants of Skylar and 
the third nor'easter right here very defined because we already know what happened they actually add to the data after the fact to make sure it was all correct um, certainly a significant nor'easter we had a gust of 80 miles an hour in Nantucket but as we move forward you could see very common patterns stay the same and that is why they are talking about this fourth nor'easter before that nor'easter though we have a system that moves across the central plains into the southeast uh, which can, could bring some significant weather including tornadoes those are our typical areas we're talking Louisiana Mississippi Alabama um, even a little bit north of that, we could be dealing with the uh, east coast of Oklahoma, most of Arkansas, South Missouri, and then we have Tennessee and Kentucky in there as well. That would be Friday going into Saturday would be the brunt of that. And then right after that's over, that low system that we just saw moving up from Washington and Oregon swoops down across the Rockies. It gets a very south dip into Texas. And then we see that thing moving right across the U.S. It begins to spin. Again, it's because we have this same exact shape going on that brings all these systems, whether they make it downwards or they make it across here, they get picked up by this shear wind here and caught up in the upper level shear wind both of which meeting right over Florida and it brings it right up into the East Coast so again this is current time today but when, it, when this shape stays the same this system that is beginning up by Washington Oregon it's moving down as another moisture sisters moving uh, system rather sorry is moving this way they meet together they get caught up in this pinch this pinch zone right here between Texas and the Gulf of Mexico and then whoop brought right up to the northeast and that would be nor'easter number four and even possibility of number five after it as we get close to Easter Sunday April Fool's Day which is obviously April 1st so we could have a nor'easter on April Fool's Day which is Easter Sunday everybody so this is not over yet uh, whether this is going to be a winter storm or a wet nor'easter uh, regardless we're still dealing with storm surge with these same areas that have been getting pounded for over two weeks now and then always before these nor'easters we have a massive moisture system that moves through the central plains a lot of times it's north of Texas and then Louisiana Mississippi Alabama we have Georgia the Carolinas and then moving up into the northeast that's where our guesses begin with the snow lines depending on what comes down from Canada now again, Again, when the jet stream dips down like this over the U.S., it allows that cold air from Canada to move down. When we have these up swoops like this, it allows the Caribbean air to move up into the states, which is the warm air. So right now it's cold in Northern California. That's why I showed you these, or I showed you the temperature charts before. It's 40 degrees right now in California with the wind chill. So that dip is right here, allowing the cold air down, and then it swoops up this way. That's why it's going to be a little warmer today in the central part of the U.S. That's going to move west to east, followed by a moisture front. Now here is that moisture moving in from this area here, and here is the winter storm possibly, even the low system that's going to move down here. It's going to get caught in this area right here in that pinch zone and then brought right up to the northeast as a nor'easter. Now I'll back this up and we'll check out what's going on. So we have the remnants once again of Winter Storm Skylar and the third nor'easter there. And then as we move forward in time, this only gives us a couple hours, we can see that warm, dry air moving across Louisiana, parts of Mississippi, Alabama, and Florida. And then even up into Arkansas. Arkansas is going to have some warmer temperatures, but then that moisture is behind it right here. And we can see that begins to flow in over Texas. And it's going to start dipping down into Louisiana. And that's where that tornado threat might be uh, over the weekend. So we need to keep an eye on that. I'll be over um, near uh, Westchester, PA this weekend by my girlfriend's house. We will talk about this all weekend long, including the low pressure system that will be the number four nor'easter. Once these two meet here, they're going to get caught up right in this area. That's where we saw this system right here. They begin to meet right here, and then as we move forward, you see it begins to move up into a nor'easter situation. They don't have all the data here quite yet because the European model and the GFS model are not so much in agreement yet about exactly where this low pressure is going to be. Remember, we talk about this. The farther out this way the low pressure is, the more that the situation with the nor'easter is pulled in from this direction. The closer that low is, the more that this specific low itself is what causes the issues on the coast. So we don't want coastal damage damage anymore. We still have areas in Massachusetts where that storm wall, uh, the storm wall fell down, uh, houses were destroyed, uh, Nantucket again 80 mile an hour gusts, we had over two feet of snow in areas of New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, Northeast Pennsylvania got slammed, Erie Pennsylvania got slammed, Buffalo, all of the Northeast is just done with snow right now including 
myself. Now, to give you one more little one more little look here at what this dip is doing here, it's bringing everything that happens in the middle of the country or begins in the far west or the northwest, regardless whether it's down in the Baja region or up in here. Both of these systems move and they get caught right here. You can see the dip outlined in this uh, water vapor chart. They get caught and they form into lows and then they move over the ocean and then boom right up into the east coast and there's no signs of this dip changing anytime soon and that is why I brought up this 10 day uh, jet stream chart you could just see this half circle is just rolling everything in the US up and then this way up into the northeast and that's why they're called nor'easters they're just that's where they go um, it's not that common to have this many this time of year we're actually supposed to be getting uh, past that time now we're moving in towards tornado season and then we have hurricane season but you can clearly see on this jet stream chart by day 8 which is the 20th we have that low pressure system moving up into the northeast and you can see where it begins to form you can see right over Texas here it meets down with this moisture system we just talked about on this chart one and two they both meet right around here and then that's when they start getting pulled up into the northeast so I hope that gives you guys a little bit of a better idea of why this is happening this deep dip we have with the cold air is what's allowing these storms that are coming off Washington and Oregon into the states to become winter storms now is it going to be cold enough for this to be another winter storm slash nor'easter it's hard to tell it looks like it's very possible especially for the same areas that just got slammed like Maine New Hampshire Vermont and the upper areas of New York and then coastal areas will be de dealing with that um, storm surge once again if this thing is close to the water if it's not we could be dealing with some bigger waves maybe not as intense as the past three but certainly a nor'easter so once again guys I hope you have a good morning I hope I explained that um, enough to where you get a better idea of why this is happening rather than when it's coming so you can look at these charts and figure it out yourself alright guys have a great morning talk to you later this afternoon bye bye